Importance of Being Earnest is a play in three parts, set in England in the 1890s, that opens in Algernon Moncrief's flat. In the introduction, Algernon is playing the piano, while his servant, Lane, prepares to host Algernon's aunt, Augusta, for tea. Algernon's friend, Jack Worthing, who has a double identity as Ernest, enters. Algernon says Ernest must leave because he flirts with Gwendolyn, his cousin and aunt's daughter. Jack says he plans to propose to Gwendolyn, but Algernon refuses to give his consent until Ernest resolves the issue of who Cecily is. Jack, under pressure, explains that Cecily is his ward and admits he maintains two identities, Ernest when he's in town and Jack when he's in the country. Worthing's dual identity parallels Algernon's habit of using his imaginary invalid friend Bunbury as an excuse to avoid social obligations. Lady Bracknell, Algernon's Aunt Augusta, and her daughter Gwendolyn arrive. In the rising action, once Ernest and Gwendolyn are alone, Ernest proposes. Gwendolyn accepts. When Lady Bracknell returns, she quizzes Jack to determine his suitability as a husband. Realizing he was adopted as a baby and has no direct family, Lady Bracknell rejects the so-called Ernest. Later, Jack's ward, <laughs> Cecily, is studying with her governess, Miss Prism, at Jack's country home. When Cecily is alone, Algernon arrives, pretending to be Jack's brother, Ernest. The two flirt. When Jack Worthing arrives, he says his brother Ernest has died and asks Dr. <gasps> Chasuble to christen him. But Cecily comes out of the house and informs Jack that his brother is there. When Jack says he doesn't have a brother, Cecily returns with Ernest. Jack agrees to change his mourning clothes to get Algernon to leave. When he does, Cecily returns and Ernest proposes. Cecily accepts and informs him they've already been engaged for months and that she decided this without having met him. She also informs him she's <laughs> always had a dream of marrying someone named Ernest. Both men now plan to be rechristened as Ernest. Gwendolyn enters. The two women discover they are both engaged to marry Ernest Worthing and argue until the men return. The women are offended to learn they've been lied to and neither is engaged to a man named Ernest. They storm off into the house angrily. When the two men are left alone to try to come up with a plan to save their engagements, the men try to explain themselves. Lady Bracknell re-enters. When she learns Cecily is wealthy, she approves of the marriage to Algernon, but Jack withholds his consent. Lady Bracknell recognizes the name Miss Prism midst the hubbub. In the play's climax, Miss Prism enters and Lady Bracknell interrogates her about an event that happened 28 years ago. Miss Prism accidentally left a baby for whom she was responsible in a handbag in a railway station. During the falling action, Miss Prism identifies Jack as the baby she inadvertently abandoned to everyone's shock. Lady Bracknell explains that the baby Miss Prism was caring for belonged to her sister, and Jack is revealed as Algernon's older brother. In the play's resolution, Jack learns his real name has been Ernest all along, and he can marry Gwendolyn. There are five characters central to the funny, intricately woven plot of the importance of being Ernest. The first is Jack Worthing. Jack's background provides the play with its mystery and plot conflicts, which start and end with his name. Jack leads a double life. He goes by the name of Ernest when he's in town and by Jack when he's in the country. Although he thinks he's invented Ernest, at the end of the play, he learns that Ernest is actually his real name. Jack's character is rife with contradictions. Jack is, by his own account, habitually dishonest. He even apologizes for telling the truth. On the other hand, he takes his country responsibility seriously, including his guardianship of Cecily. He is enraged at Algernon's deceptions when it comes to courting Cecily, but seemingly forgets he's done the same thing. Algernon Moncrief is a privileged idler and a dandy, a young upper-class man who lives for pleasure, does not work, and moves from one social venue to another. He's also clever and inventive, having created an imaginary sick friend named Bunbury, whom he uses as an excuse to avoid unpleasant or unwanted social obligations. Algernon mocks social conventions, but ends up falling in love at first sight with Cecily Cardew. <laughs> Algernon's actions drive the plot. It is Algy who listens in on Jack telling Gwendolyn where he lives and shows up there. It is Algy who pretends to be Ernest so he can meet and court Jack's ward, Cecily. Gwendolyn Fairfax is a shallow and conventional young woman, a well-indoctrinated product of conventional upper-class Victorian society. 
Gwendolyn seems sure of herself and sure of what she wants in life, sometimes in comic fashion. She wants love, but is obsessed with the idea of marrying someone <gasps> named Ernest. Wooed by Jack, who uses the name Ernest, she appears smart and sophisticated, but only superficially. Cecily Cardew is the granddaughter of Thomas Cardew, who adopted Jack. She is quite sheltered, having spent her life in the country rather than in the city, and is chafing under Jack's rules and Miss Prism's tutelage. She's so obsessed with the idea of bad boy Ernest, Jack's fictional brother, that when Algernon, playing said brother, says he loves her and wants to marry her, Cecily reveals that they've already been engaged for three months. She's created an elaborate fantasy solely based on Jack's accounts. And like Gwendolyn, she's fixated <laughs> on being in love with a man named Ernest. Lady Bracknell is the voice of authority and speaks with all the haughty self-righteousness of the conventional Victorian upper-class matron. An expert at social interactions, she is brash, interfering, greedy, and snobbishly conservative. She expects to be served and obeyed, and she is. One of her primary interests is to secure a suitable, meaning rich and well-connected, <laughs> husband for her daughter, Gwendolyn. A handbag, the act of christening, and the imaginary character Bunbury are the standout symbols in the uproariously funny play, The Importance of Being Earnest. The handbag Miss Prism accidentally abandoned at the railway station years ago is the only physical symbol of the play, and it appears only at the very end. There is a long tradition in myths and fairy tales of babies who are meant for greatness who are intentionally abandoned. Some of these babies are even abandoned in containers that take on symbolic significance, like the biblical Moses in the basket. The handbag is a parody of this tradition. Baby Ernest is not abandoned because of a prophecy or because of some threat to his existence, but because his nurse, Miss Prism, is distracted. This handbag therefore parodies the importance or significance of one's circumstances. There's not an actual christening in this play. Instead, once the young women indicate how important the name Ernest is to them, christening is continually referenced, and it carries considerable symbolic weight as a rite important in Christianity. As children are named and baptized, they are welcomed as members of the Christian community. In this play, christening is part of the satire of social conventions. Algernon and Jack both plan to have themselves christened to rename themselves. Jack and Algernon's desire to be renamed has nothing to do with them joining a religious community, but with joining the social community of marriage. Through this symbol, the play mocks the practices of religious rituals by drawing parallels with romance-centered social rituals. Bunbury is Algernon's imaginary friend, referred to as an invalid, which is an outdated and inappropriate term today. Algernon uses Bunbury's illness as an excuse when he needs to get out of social obligations. And when he decides to visit Cecily, he tells Lane he's going out Bunburying. This device is parallel to Jack's use of the double identity of Jack and Ernest, which he uses to carve out blocks of free time from such obligations. Bunbury does not exist physically, but becomes a verbal symbol representing the act of telling small, useful lies as a way of navigating one's way through or out of social conventions. Social conventions, love, language, and reversal are the most important themes in Oscar Wilde's iconic play, The Importance of Being Earnest. The play satirizes social conventions about class, relationships, acceptable behavior, and art. At times, the satire is broad, as in Act 3, when Lady Bracknell suddenly realizes Cecily has extremely solid qualities <laughs> as soon as she learns the girl has a considerable fortune. Lady Bracknell's remark mocks the way people's opinions of character can change once they learn someone is rich. At other times, the satire of social convention is more subtle, like when Jack says, some ants are tall, some ants are not tall. That is a matter that surely an ant may be allowed to decide for herself. The joke satirizes the social convention of free choice. The plot of this play challenges the social convention that people choose freely in love or other matters. 
love, or the desire for it, drives many of the play's characters. And while love may be central to Oscar Wilde's universe, he presents a version that is shallow and superficial. Wilde's characters fall in love based on hearsay and shallowness, often based on wealth or physical attractiveness alone. Structurally, the play is a romantic comedy. One couple, Jack and Gwendolyn, who are already in love, must overcome obstacles to their marriage, while another couple, Algernon and Cecily, meet, fall in love, and then overcome obstacles to their marriage. The speed with which love develops in this play is part of the comedy and part of Wilde's satire of romance, as is the ease with which obstacles to love are waved away when the mood is right. Language is central to this play. Its power, its flexibility, its longevity, and the sheer joy it can produce speaks to this theme. One critic famously argued that in this play, Oscar Wilde creates a verbal universe in which language is used to translate life itself into an aesthetic phenomenon. Wilde uses a range of linguistic techniques to create humor, especially juxtaposing something with its opposite. Gwendolyn provides a good example of this technique when she tells Jack, if you are not too long, I will wait here for you all my life. The title of the play is, of course, a pun hovering over all its action. There is a continual tension between being earnest and being earnest. Wilde skillfully maintains this tension throughout the play, resolving it only in the end when Jack is revealed as earnest and realizes the importance of being earnest. Finally, the importance of being earnest uses the principle of reversal to satirize Victorian conventions. Nearly all of the main characters express ideals that reverse both social norms and common sense by expressing these ideals as if they were widely known truths. Characters change opinions. Algernon dismisses marriage, but wants to marry Cecily. Names, Algernon to Ernest, Jack to Ernest. Personal histories and families, Jack gains an entire family, and even core beliefs. These reversals create logical paradoxes that come with the territory of madcap love, lust, and courtship. <laughs>